51st state have been designed and used as a symbol by supporters of statehood in various areas. This is an example of how a 51 star flag might look. The 51st state in post-1959 American political discourse is a phrase that refers to areas or locales that are seriously or facetiously considered candidates for U.S. statehood. Joining the 50 states that presently compose the United States, the phrase has been applied to external territories as well as parts of existing states which would be admitted as separate states in their own right. The phrase, 51st state, can be used in a positive sense, meaning that a region or territory is so aligned, supportive, and conducive with the United States that it is like a U.S. state. It can also be used in a pejorative sense, meaning an area or region is perceived to be under excessive American cultural or military influence or control. In various countries around the world, people who believe the local or national culture has become too Americanized sometimes use the term 51st state in reference to their own countries. Voters in Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico have both voted for statehood in referendums. As statehood candidates, their admission to the Union requires congressional approval with the President's signature. Legal Requirements under Article 4, Section 3 of the United States Constitution, which outlines the relationship among the states, Congress has the power to admit new states to the Union. The states are required to give full faith and credit to the acts of each other's legislatures and courts, which is generally held to include the recognition of legal contracts, marriages, and criminal judgments. The states are guaranteed military and civil defense by the federal government, which is also obliged by Article 4, Section 4, to guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government. Congress is a highly politicized body, and discussions about the admission of new states, which typically take years before approval, are invariably informed by the political concerns of Congress at the time the proposal is presented. These concerns include or included maintaining a balance between free and slave states, and which faction in Congress would benefit, and which lose, if the proposed state were admitted. Puerto Rico Puerto Rico has been discussed as a potential 51st state of the United States. In a 2012 status referendum a majority of voters, 54 percent, expressed dissatisfaction with the current political relationship. In a separate question, 61 percent of voters supported statehood. On December 11, 2012, Puerto Rico's legislature resolved to request that the President and the U.S. Congress act on the results, end the current form of territorial status and begin the process of admitting Puerto Rico to the Union as a state. On January 4, 2017, Puerto Rico's new representative to Congress pushed a bill that would ratify statehood by 2025. Background Since 1898, Puerto Rico has had limited representation in the Congress in the form of a resident commissioner. A non-voting delegate, the 110th Congress returned the Commissioner's power to vote in the Committee of the Whole, but not on matters where the vote would represent a decisive participation. Puerto Rico has elections on the United States Presidential Primary, or Caucus of the Democratic Party, and the Republican Party to select delegates to the respective parties' national conventions. Although presidential electors are not granted on the Electoral College, as American citizens, Puerto Ricans can vote in U.S. presidential elections, provided they reside in one of the 50 states or the District of Columbia and not in Puerto Rico itself. Residents of Puerto Rico pay U.S. 
federal taxes, import, export taxes, federal commodity taxes, social security taxes, therefore contributing to the American government. Most Puerto Rico residents do not pay federal income tax, but to pay federal social security and Medicare. However, federal employees, those who do business with the federal government, Puerto Rico-based corporations that intend to send funds to the U.S. and others to pay federal income taxes. Puerto Ricans may enlist in the U.S. military. Puerto Ricans have participated in all American wars since 1898. 52 Puerto Ricans had been killed in the Iraq War and war in Afghanistan by November 2012. Puerto Rico has been under U.S. sovereignty for over a century after it was ceded to the U.S. by Spain following the end of the Spanish-American War, and Puerto Ricans have been U.S. citizens since 1917. The island's ultimate status has not been determined, and its residents do not have voting representation in their federal government. Puerto Rico has limited representation in the U.S. Congress in the form of a resident commissioner, a delegate with limited no voting rights. Like the states, Puerto Rico has self-rule, a republican form of government organized pursuant to a constitution adopted by its people, and a bill of rights. This constitution was created when the U.S. Congress directed local government to organize a constitutional convention to write the Puerto Rico. Constitution in 1951. The acceptance of the Constitution by Puerto Rico's electorate, the U.S. Congress, and the U.S. President occurred in 1952. In addition, the rights, privileges, and immunities attendant to United States citizens are respected in Puerto Rico to the same extent as though Puerto Rico were a state of the Union through the express extension of the Privileges and Immunities Clause of the U.S. Constitution by the U.S. Congress in 1948. Puerto Rico is designated in its constitution as the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. The Constitution of Puerto Rico which became effective in 1952 adopted the name of Estado Libre. Asociado, officially translated into English as Commonwealth, for its body politic. The island is under the jurisdiction of the Territorial Clause of the U.S. Constitution, which has led to doubts about the finality of the Commonwealth status for Puerto Rico. In addition, all people born in Puerto Rico become citizens of the U.S. at birth but citizens residing in Puerto Rico cannot vote for president nor for full members of either House of Congress. Statehood would grant island residents full voting rights at the federal level. The Puerto Rico Democracy Act was approved on April 29, 2010, by the United States House of Representatives 223 to 169, but was not approved by the Senate before the end of the 111th Congress. It would have provided for a federally sanctioned self-determination process for the people of Puerto Rico. This act would provide for referendums to be held in Puerto Rico to determine the island's ultimate political status. It had also been introduced in 2007. Vote for statehood in November 2012, a referendum resulted in 54% of respondents voting to reject the current status under the Territorial Clause of the U.S. Constitution, while a second question resulted in 61% of voters identifying statehood as the preferred alternative to the current territorial status. The 2012 referendum was by far the most most successful referendum for statehood advocates and support for statehood has risen in each successive popular referendum. However, more than one in four voters abstained from answering the question on the preferred alternative status. Statehood opponents have argued that the statehood option garnered only 45% of the votes if abstentions are included. If abstentions are considered, 
The result of the referendum is much closer to 44% for statehood, a number that falls under the 50% majority mark. The Washington Post, The New York Times, and The Boston Herald have published opinion pieces expressing support for the statehood of Puerto Rico. On November 8, 2012, Washington, D.C. newspaper The Hill published an article saying that Congress will likely ignore the results of the referendum due to the circumstances behind the votes, and U.S. Congressman Luis Gutierrez, U.S. Congresswoman Nidia Velazquez, both of Puerto Rican ancestry, agreed with the Hill's statements. Shortly after the results were published, Puerto Rico, born U.S. Congressman Jose Enrique Serrano commented, I was particularly impressed with the outcome of the Statues' referendum in Puerto Rico. A majority of those voting signaled the desire to change the current territorial status. In a second question, an even larger majority asked to become a state. This is an earthquake in Puerto Rican politics. It will demand the attention of Congress and a definitive answer to the Puerto Rican request for change. This is a history-making moment, where voters asked to move forward. Several days after the referendum, the resident commissioner Pedro Pierluisi, Governor Luis Fortuno, and Governor-elect Alejandro Garcia Padilla wrote separate letters to the President of the United States, Barack Obama, addressing the results of the voting. Pierre Luis urged Obama to begin legislation in favor of the statehood of Puerto Rico. In light of its win in the referendum, Fortuno urged him to move the process forward. Garcia Padilla asked him to reject the results, because of their ambiguity. The White House stance related to the November 2012 plebiscite was that the results were clear. The people of Puerto Rico want the issue of status resolved and a majority chose statehood in the second question. Former White House director of Hispanic media stated, Now it is time for Congress to act, and the administration will work with them on that effort, so that the people of Puerto Rico can determine their own future. On May 15, 2013, resident commissioner Pierre Luisi introduced H.R. 2000 to Congress to set forth the process for Puerto Rico to be admitted as a state of the Union, asking for Congress to vote on ratifying Puerto Rico as the 51st state. On February 12, 2014, Senator Martin Heinrich introduced a bill in the U.S. Senate. The bill would require a binding referendum to be held in Puerto Rico asking whether the territory wants to be admitted as a state. In the event of a yes vote, the president would be asked to submit legislation to Congress to admit Puerto Rico as a state. Government funding for a fifth referendum On January 15, 2014, the United States House of Representatives approved $2.5 million in funding to hold a referendum. This referendum can be held at any time as there is no deadline by which the funds have to be used. The United States Senate then passed the bill which was signed into law on January 17, 2014, by Barack Obama, then the President of the United States. 2017 Referendum The previous plebiscites provided voters with three options, statehood, free association, and independence. The Puerto Rican status referendum of 2017 originally offered only two options, statehood and independence, free association. However, a current territorial status was added before the referendum took place. The referendum was held on June 11, 2017, with an overwhelming majority of voters supporting statehood at 97.16%. However, with a voter turnout of 22.99%, a historical low. If the majority voted for independence, free association, a second vote would have been held to determine the preference for independence as a nation.
or associated free state status with independence, but with a free and voluntary political association between Puerto Rico and the United States. The specifics of the association agreement would be detailed in the Compact of Free Association that would be negotiated between the U.S. and Puerto Rico. That document might cover topics such as the role of the U.S. military in Puerto Rico, the use of the U.S. currency, free trade between the two entities, and whether Puerto Ricans would be U.S. citizens. Governor Ricardo Rossello is strongly in favor of statehood to help develop the economy and help to solve our 500-year-old colonial dilemma. Colonialism is not an option. It's a civil rights issue. 3.5 million citizens seeking an absolute democracy, he told the news media. Benefits of statehood include an additional $10 billion per year in federal funds, the right to vote in presidential elections, higher social security and Medicare benefits, and a right for its government agencies and municipalities to file for bankruptcy. The latter is currently prohibited at approximately the same time as the referendum. Puerto Rico's legislators are also expected to vote on a bill that would allow the governor to draft a state constitution and hold elections to choose senators and representatives to the federal Congress, regardless of the outcome of the referendum, or the bill on drafting a constitution action by the United States Congress would be necessary to implement changes to the status of Puerto Rico under the Territorial Clause of the United States Constitution. If the majority of Puerto Ricans were to choose the Free Association option, and only 33% voted for it in 2012 and if it were granted by the U.S. Congress, Puerto Rico would become a free associated state, virtually independent nation. It would have a political and economical treaty of association with the U.S. that would stipulate all delegated agreements. This could give Puerto Rico a similar status to Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, and Palau, countries which currently have a compact of free association with the United States. Those free associated states use the American dollar, receive some financial support, and the promise of military defense if they refuse military access to any other country. Their citizens are allowed to work in the U.S. and serve in its military. On June 11, 500,000 Puerto Ricans had voted for statehood, while 7,600 voted for independence and 6,700 voted for status quo. Guam Guam is an unincorporated and organized territory of the United States. Located in the western Pacific Ocean, Guam is one of five American territories with an established civilian government. In the 1980s and early 1990s, there was a significant movement in favor of this U.S. territory becoming a commonwealth which would give it a level of self-government similar to Puerto Rico and the Northern Mariana Islands. However, the federal government rejected the version of a commonwealth that the government of Guam proposed because its clauses were incompatible with the territorial clause of the U.S. Constitution. Other movements advocate U.S. statehood for Guam, union with the state of Hawaii, or union with the Northern Mariana Islands as a single territory, or independence. In a 1982 plebiscite, voters indicated interest in seeking Commonwealth status, but seemed not to understand the ramifications of such a change. The island has been considering another non-binding plebiscite on decolonization since 1998. Governor Eddie Barza Calver intended to include one during the island's November 2016 elections, but it was delayed again. A commission on decolonization was established in 1997 to educate the people of Guam about the various political status options in its relationship with the U.S. statehood, free association, and independence. The group was dormant for some years 
In 2013, the Commission began seeking funding to start a public education campaign. There were few subsequent developments until late 2016. In early December 2016, the Commission scheduled a series of education sessions in various villages about the current status of Guam's relationship with the U.S. and the self-determination options that might be considered. The Commission's current executive director is Edward Alvarez and there are 10 members. The group is also expected to release position papers on independence and statehood, but the contents have not yet been completed. Guam has been occupied for over 450 years by the Spanish, the Japanese, and the United States. In 2016, Governor Eddie Calva planned a decolonization referendum that the indigenous Chamorro people of Guam would solely participate in, in which the three options would be given, including statehood, independence, and free association. However, this referendum for the Chamorro people was struck down by a federal judge on the grounds of racial discrimination. In the wake of this ruling, Governor Calver has suggested that two ballots be held, one for the Chamorro people, and one for eligible U.S. citizens who are non-indigenous residents of Guam. The governor hopes for a decolonization plebiscite to occur in 2018. It is also possible that in 2018, Guam and its neighbor, the Northern Mariana Islands may vote on a reunification referendum. United Nations Support The United Nations is in favor of greater self-determination for Guam and other such territories. The UN's Special Committee on Decolonization has agreed to endorse the governor's education plan. The Commission's May 2016 report states, with academics from the University of Guam, the Commission was working to create and approve educational materials. The Office of the Governor was collaborating closely with the Commission in developing educational materials for the public. The United States Department of the Interior had approved a $300,000 grant for decolonization education, Edward Alvarez told the United Nations Pacific Regional Seminar in May 2016. We are hopeful that this might indicate a shift in United States policy to its non-self-governing territories such as Guam, where they will be more willing to engage in discussions about our future and offer true support to help push us towards true self-governances and self-determination. District of Columbia Washington, D.C. is often mentioned as a candidate for statehood. In Federalist No. 43 of the Federalist Papers, James Madison considered the implications of the definition of the seat of government found in the United States Constitution, although he noted potential conflicts of interest and the need for a municipal legislature for local purposes. Madison did not address the district's role in national voting. Legal scholars disagree on whether a simple act of Congress can admit the district as a state, due to its status as the seat of government of the United States, which Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution requires to be under the exclusive jurisdiction of Congress, depending on the interpretation of this text. Admission of the full district as a state may require a constitutional amendment, which is much more difficult to enact. However, the Constitution does not set a minimum size for the district. Its size has already changed once before, when Virginia reclaimed the portion of the district south of the Potomac. So the constitutional requirement for a federal district can be satisfied by reducing its size to the small central core of government buildings and monuments, giving the rest of the territory back to Maryland, Washington, D.C. Residents who support the statehood movement sometimes use a shortened version of the Revolutionary War protest motto, no taxation without representation, emitting the initial, no, denoting the lack of congressional representation. 
The phrase is now printed on newly issued Washington, D.C. license plates. President Bill Clinton's presidential limousine had the taxation without representation license plate late in his term, while President George W. Bush had the vehicle's plates changed shortly after beginning his term in office. President Barack Obama had the license plates changed back to the protest style at the beginning of his second term. This position was carried by the D.C. Statehood Party, a political party. It has since merged with the local Green Party affiliate to form the D.C. Statehood Green Party. The nearest this movement ever came to success was in 1978, when Congress passed the District of Columbia Voting Rights Amendment. Two years later, in 1980, local citizens passed an initiative calling for a constitutional convention for a new state. In 1982, voters ratified the constitution of the state which was to be called New Columbia. The drive for statehood stalled in 1985, however, when the District of Columbia Voting Rights Amendment failed, because not enough states ratified the amendment within the seven-year span specified. Another proposed option would be to have Maryland, from which the current land was ceded, retake the District of Columbia, as Virginia has already done for its part while leaving the National Mall, the United States Capitol, and the White House in a truncated District of Columbia. This would give residents of the District of Columbia the benefit of statehood while precluding the creation of a 51st state. The requirement that Maryland consent to a change in its borders makes this unlikely. 2016 Statehood Referendum on April 15, 2016, District Mayor Muriel Bowser called for a city-wide vote on whether the nation's capital should become the 51st state. This was followed by the release of a proposed state constitution. This constitution would make the mayor of the District of Columbia the governor of the proposed state, while the members of the city council would make up the proposed House of Delegates. While the name, New Columbia, has long been associated with the movement, community members thought other names, such as Potomac or Douglas, were more appropriate for the area. On November 8, 2016, the voters of the District of Columbia voted overwhelmingly in favor of statehood, with 86% of voters voting to advise approving the proposal. Philippines the Philippines has had small grassroots movements for U.S. statehood. Originally part of the platform of the Progressive Party, then known as the Federalista Party, the party dropped it in 1907, which coincided with the name change. In 1981, the presidential candidate for the Federal Party ran on a platform of Philippine statehood. As recently as 2004, the concept of the Philippines becoming a U.S. state has been part of a political platform in the Philippines. Supporters of this movement include Filipinos who believe that the quality of life in the Philippines would be higher, and that there would be less poverty there if the Philippines were an American state or territory. Supporters also include Filipinos that had fought as members of the United States Armed Forces in various wars during the Commonwealth period. The Philippine statehood movement had a significant impact during the early American colonial period. It is no longer a mainstream movement, but is a small social movement that gains interest and talk in that nation. By partition of a secession from current U.S. states There exist several proposals to divide states with regions that are politically or culturally divergent into smaller, more homogeneous, administratively efficient entities. Splitting a state would need to receive the approval of its legislature and the Congress. Proposals of new states by partition include Arizona, the secession of Pima County in Arizona, 
with the hopes of Cochise, Yuma, and Santa Cruz joining to form a state. California, and Oregon, Jefferson, from Northern California and Southern Oregon. Various proposals of partition and secession in California, usually involving splitting the south half from the north, or the urban coastline from the rest of the state. California's Secretary of State allowed Tim Draper to start collecting signatures for his petition to split California into six different states. The initiative drive did not gain sufficient valid signatures to be put on the ballot. Colorado, on June 6, 2013, commissioners in Weld County, Colorado announced a proposal to leave Colorado along with neighboring counties and form the state of North Colorado. The counties in contention voted to begin plans for secession on November 5, 2013, with mixed results. Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, Delmarva, from the eastern shores of Maryland and Virginia combining with the state of Delaware, or more often, only Kent County and Sussex County, Delaware, Florida, the secession of South Florida, and the greater Miami area to form the state of South Florida. South Florida has a population of over 7 million, comprising 41% of Florida's population. Illinois, the secession of Cook County, which contains Chicago, from Illinois to form a state. Chicago sits in the northeast corner of the state, with the remainder of the Illinois sometimes referred to as downstate Illinois. Such proposals have invariably come from the more Republican downstate Illinois as a way to end the dominance in statewide politics of the overwhelmingly Democratic Chicago area. Stronger moves have been made to form Southern Illinois, the Great River State, with the separation being south of Springfield, the capital would be in Mount Vernon in the area commonly referred to as Little Egypt. Maryland, the secession of five counties on the western side of the state due to political Differences with the more liberal central part of the state, Michigan, and Superior, the northern part of Michigan known formally as the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and colloquially known as Upper Land, the Upper Peninsula, the Up or Superior Land. Note that the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is actually north of the region of the Lower Peninsula normally known in Lower Michigan as Northern Michigan, which tends to cause some confusion. New York, various proposals partitioning New York into separate states, all of which involve to some degree the separation of New York City from the rest of New York State. Texas, under the joint resolution of Congress, by which the Republic of Texas was admitted to the Union, it had the right to divide itself into as many as five different states. It is not clear whether this provides any power beyond that already provided by the Constitution. What is clear is that the Texas legislature would have to approve any proposal to divide the state. Using this prerogative, there were a significant number of Texans who supported dividing the state in its early decades. They were generally called divisionists. The Texas Constitution and the Texas Annexation Act both provide for the possibility of Texas voting to divide into up to five sovereign states of the Union. Current Texas politics and self-image make any tampering with Texas status as the largest state by land area in the contiguous United States unlikely. Washington, dividing the state into western Washington and eastern Washington via the Cascade Mountains. Suggested names include East Washington, Lincoln, and Cascadia, the national movement for the establishment of a 49th state, founded by Oscar Brown, Sr. and Bradley Cyrus and active in Chicago in 1934-37, had the aim of forming an African-American state in the South. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.